So the other day I was having a discussion with a good friend of mine and the question came up whether or not a polymer frame hammer fired pistol is a good CCW EDC option in a market that is completely flooded by striker fired pistols. And that's my question to you guys. Sound off in the comment section down below. What do you guys think? Can a polymer framed hammer fired pistol compete with the likes of Glock, Smith & Wesson, HK, Walther, and the list goes on? Let me know what you guys think, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this episode. Coming up. Hey guys, thanks so much for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. Regardless if you agree or disagree with me, I really do appreciate you spending the time to check things out on the channel and this video. That really means a lot to me. All right, so let's get into the pistol that we're gonna be talking about, and it's going to be the Taurus TH9C. And oh boy, how I can already see the comment section heating up on this one. Uh, but Mark, you had so many bad things to say about Taurus in the last video about the G2C. I get it, all right, I totally get it. Um, I have been called biased against Taurus, and uh, I would say to that, yeah, yeah, I am. I am biased against Taurus. I have, I have my opinions about Taurus, and I've already covered a lot of those. There's actually been an article that I found uh, here, I just stumbled on it here a couple of weeks ago, about two executives that have been indicted by the Brazilian government for knowingly selling 8,000 firearms uh, Taurus firearms to a arms dealer that uh, then ended up in the Yemen civil war. Um, and and that, that bothers me, right? But with that being said, I was asked by one of my Patreon members to take a look at this pistol. And that's how this video came about. So thank you so much for um, asking me to look at this pistol. Uh, if you guys are interested in supporting the channel, there's tons of links down in the description below on how you can do that, whether it be my Amazon top 10 or through fitandfire.com. That goes to a number of different affiliate links uh, that help support the channel. There's also Patreon and PayPal if you guys are interested in doing that. So I have a tier in Patreon uh, that if you are a part of that tier, then you can suggest video topics. Someone asked me to look at the TH9C. That's what we're doing. And I'm going to look at this pistol solely on the product itself. I'm gonna to try to do my best to keep my opinions about Taurus out of this video as best I can so I can just talk about the product itself. Regardless if it had Smith & Wesson's name on it or any other manufacturer's name on it, that's how I'm going to be looking at it. And we're gonna talk about the things that I liked about it, some concerns that I have about this pistol, and then whether or not it's a good option for CCW, EDC, uh, and go from there. All right, so let's get into the specifics behind this pistol itself. It is the compact version of the TH9 from Taurus, and that is a full-sized pistol. So this is going to be the compact version, and it is a polymer-framed, hammer-fired, double-action, single-action, semi-automatic pistol chambered in nine millimeters. So that is basically the nomenclature behind this sample that I have here. The uh, specifics on the dimensions are 6.85 inches long, 5.16 inches tall, and then 1.3 inches wide. So it's going to be a little smaller than a Glock 19 and a little bigger than a Smith & Wesson Shield to kind of give you guys a ballpark of where this sits in uh, the dimensions category. It's gonna weigh 25 ounces unloaded. It does have a 3.54 inch long barrel. So that's the minutia behind this pistol. Now let's talk about the things that I like about this pistol. And there were a number of things that I really thought was this thing had going for it. Number one is going to be the sights. These are Novak branded sights directly from Taurus. And that is a 
big statement right out of the box. You're going to get steel sights that are three dot. And if you are a fan of three dot style sights, then you're going to, I think, really like these sights. Novak has a name uh, that is fairly popular in the gun industry and people really do like them. They're dovetailed in and uh, they're really solid. So I think that is a great, great first thing to notice with this pistol right out of the box. Then you put it in your hand and it feels really good. The ergonomics on it is really nice. The grip texture is very similar to the G2C. And then it has these divots on the frame for a good memory position for your trigger finger or non-firing thumb to make sure that you are marrying up your pistol in your grip each and every single time exactly the same. So those were the first two things that I noticed right out of the box. The next thing is going to be the thumb safety. Now I'm not a thumb safety guy. I don't carry hardly any pistols that have a thumb safety on it. But the thing that I like about it is the fact that it has an integrated decocker. And I'm not talking about carrying this appendix. I mean that when this pistol is cocked in the single action mode, if you're done firing, all you have to do is press down on the thumb safety and it will decock the firearm without shooting another round. And you don't have to manipulate the trigger like you would like on a uh, 1911, for example, right? So that's another great feature when it comes to the safety side of things. The next thing that I really liked about this pistol is the fact that it has really good capacity. It comes with a flush fitting 13 round magazine uh, that is going to be in the firearm when you pull it out of the box. And then it also comes with a, an extended 17 round magazine as well. So while the flush fitting magazine is a little lower, obviously, obviously than this one here, um, it, it's still on par with a Glock 19. You're gonna be able to carry 30 plus one rounds with you if you decide to carry this as a CCW or EDC style pistol. So that's something that I really did like about it. And then the final thing, it should be no surprise when it comes to a Taurus, is going to be the price. You can find this anywhere from like 285 to 350 on the high end. And I pretty sure, I haven't seen it, but I'm pretty sure you can find it even cheaper depending on who and when you buy it from, especially if it's like Black Friday or 4th of July sale or something like that, you probably could find it uh, at or below 275. So that is a handful of really great features with this pistol right out of the box without even shooting this pistol. It has some really great options on it. Now, the things that I didn't like about this pistol uh, starts with the sights. These are Novak sights. I know that they're quality sights, but these particular sights on this pistol, I can't say about any other TH9C out there, but for this one, the three dot sights don't line up correctly. And what do I mean by that is if you have a perfect sight picture, the top edge of the front and rear sight are going to be parallel and you're going to have equal light around the front sight as you look through the rear notch. If you do that, the three dots should be aligned. And that's unfortunately not the case with this particular set of sights. The front sight seems a little bit low. So the first two magazines out of this, I was shooting about three to four inches low at seven yards. I'm like, man, I know I'm a decent shot. I'm not, an, I'm not a great shot. I know I'm a decent shot, but this is really low. So uh, ran a few more magazines through it and was kind of playing with the sight picture and found that I was able to tighten up my group and get it exactly where I wanted it, somewhere in between the sights and the dots being aligned. Now, that's, a, that's kind of a con for me because if this is going to be an EDC or a CCW style pistol, I don't want to guess where my sights are going to need to be aligned. I want to be able to pull up, get a good sight picture and fire and the rounds be exactly where I want them to go. So that is a concern. So if you're interested in this pistol, I would, I would definitely say, look at the sights. Uh, I, I, I have full confidence that it's probably just a, a quality issue with this particular one and others will be just fine. I'm sure a lot of people will sound off in the comment section Yep, we're good to go. So 
I, I think that that is um, a slight concern, not a deal breaker. The next thing is the trigger. Um, so the trigger is very interesting. Obviously it's a DASA style pistol, so that first trigger pull is going to be long and heavy. And it's so heavy that my analog Wheeler trigger gauge can't even register. It goes right off the end of the scale. So I'm having a guess it's probably around the nine and a half to 10 pound mark, which is quite a jump from other pistols that I'm used to like Glock 19, P365, even the VP9s and uh, some of the Walthers that I've shot. Um, that, that's a quite a bit difference, right? So that's something that will, you know, take some getting used to. But I will say that it is also a single action pistol as well, and you are going to have a significant drop in the weight of the trigger pull. It's gonna come in right about 6.5 pounds, which is going to put it on par with a lot of other stock striker fired pistols. So you're really not gaining too much with the single action mode. The few, DASA style pistols that I do have experience with is going to be the Beretta M9 or the 92FS and then the CZ SP01 Tactical. Now I do get that those are not apples to apples comparison. Those are steel frame pistols. This is a polymer frame pistol. But those pistols had a lighter single action mode and that's what I'm used to. So I was kind of surprised that it was as heavy as it was. So, you know, take that uh, as you will, whether or not that is a deal breaker for you or not. But uh, I will get into why I think that is a problem coming up here in just a second. Now, the last thing that I will say about this pistol that was a bit of a concern is the magazine release. Now, the great thing about it is it's ambidextrous. So you don't even have to switch it right out of the box. You can take the magazine out from either side which is really nice. But as you can kind of see right there, I struggled using my thumb and found that if I was to use my thumb, I would have to completely rotate my grip to get enough leverage to get that release pushed. So what I found was while I was at the range and firing, I was able to get quick magazine changes by using my middle finger and just picking up and pushing it right there. It's an easy workaround, takes a few magazines to get used to, not a problem. But if, if you are the person that is used to using your thumb, you're going to have to rotate, that can be a problem. So those are the slight concerns that I have with this pistol. At the end of the day, for you guys, it may not be a deal breaker. And if it's not, great, run with it. I, I think that that's going to be fine. Now the question is whether or not this is going to be a viable option for EDC, CCW, whatever you want to call it. And I go back and forth um, for a couple different reasons. Number one is again, the trigger. You're gonna to have to take a lot of time and practice to get used to that first double action trigger pull. It's extremely heavy. So you're more than likely gonna yank a first, first round shot until you get into the single action mode. Then your accuracy is going to improve quite a bit. Especially if you're pulling up and firing rapidly, that first that first trigger pull is gonna be pretty heavy. But on the opposite side of that, the great thing about this pistol with the thumb safety is that you can carry it kind of like a 1911 in the fact that you can cock and lock it on safe and carry it around like this. Now, would I do that personally? No, I've got, I've got reasons why I don't from my time in the military and carrying a M9. Um, the, the safety on that thing would inherently, you know, come off and go on to fire. Um, that, that's, that's a separate issue. I, I, this seems like it's going to be uh, held in place fairly well, depending on what type of magazine, or excuse me, uh, holster that you would use. But um, I don't know, I would be kind of, eh, I don't know. If you, especially if you carry it uh, appendix, it would definitely potentially be a decocker, right? <laughs> so, uh, but if that's something you don't wanna do, then you can carry it with the hammer down and on safe, or uh, you know, with it being extremely heavy and long on that double action trigger pull, you'd have to be very deliberate to get this thing to go off. You can carry it with the safety off. So those are a couple different things, different options of 
how you could carry it. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I, 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 I like the capacity. Uh, I like the features with it. Um, but I think that there are better options on the market. Uh, coming in right around somewhere in that nebulous $300 mark, I think there are a number of different options that could be better. I'm not saying they are. I say could be better. And um, the, the trigger pull on this is something I, I kind of get stuck in the mud with. So that first trigger pull, again, it's going to be heavy. So you're just going to have to take time and work yourself through that. Take a lot of trips to the range and get used to that first round coming out of this. So rambling just a little bit. I'm sorry about that. But um, yeah, I, again, I got to kind of go back and forth. But I think if I had to choose, this would probably be a truck gun or, you know, a secondary pistol that maybe you stash in a, in a nightstand or, or someplace safe um, from other family members that... Um, that you knew where it was at and could get to it if you didn't have your primary pistol. So definitely a good option, not the greatest, but uh, I would say it is a, a good option for a secondary pistol, truck gun, nightstand, or maybe just taking it to the range and planking. You know, that may be a thing too. So sound off in the comment section of what you guys think about the TH9. Have you had any experience with it? And do you think ultimately that a polymer framed hammer fired pistol is a viable option in the market that is dominated by striker fired pistols? That is, that's my take on everything. Um, so let me know what you guys think. I would appreciate it. And that basically covers it for this episode. We will catch you guys next time, and I want to say a thank you to all of the supporters out there, regardless if you're a Patreon or you're just here checking things out. I sure do appreciate it. Thank you all so much. We'll catch you later. As always, here comes a high five. Freedom through strength. Catch you later. Bye, y'all.